Good afternoon and welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I am your host, Michelle Dawes Bird, and as always, I'm super excited to be here. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood of Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, um, I missed you guys. I think I was off for the first Sunday of the month because that was actually the 4th of July. It was a holiday, so I took the day off. I missed you guys. And you know, when I'm not in front of you every first and third Sunday, I, I get a little rusty. I get a little out of place. So I'm always glad to be back. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We got a lot. We got a great conversation today. I can't wait to get into it. But before we get started in that, I just want to welcome all the new listeners, all the new followers. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Let me give you a little background as to what Real Chicks Rock is all about. We're all about creatively collaborating and connecting to raise awareness regarding issues that impact women. And we do it by way of community service public speaking, mentoring the, our workshops, and through the media, this platform right here. I've been doing this, this piece here, for about five years, so going into my sixth season, as a matter of fact. So this gives us an opportunity to talk about the issues and challenges that women may face, and we walk away with the empowerment piece which is the tools, right? We talk about things and strategies and how to problem solve some of the things that we're facing. Today's not gonna be any different. Today is gonna be all about entrepreneurship and you know, I'm super excited about that. But before we get into that, I wanna share with you today's sponsor. Yay! Today's sponsor is Gas Food Truck ATL. Good ass sandwiches and more. My friends, yes, Kelly and Jay doing it big time. This is vegan food, right? No, no meat. This is all natural, interesting, delicious. It looks, it tastes as good as it looks. Go check them out. They're on IG as Gas Food Truck ATL. They're on IG and Facebook. And they're primarily in the tri Triton Yards on Friday and Sunday um, from, I think, 11 to about 7 or 8 o'clock at night. So follow them and get that bite to eat. We're going to close out with them as well. Today's guest, oh, man, this is a an honor because this is a pioneer person. This is a CEO and the president of her own cosmetic company um, from New York. We're going to get into all of that. I love her spirit, her personality. She's a beautiful person inside and out. Today's topic is beauty is her name. And my guest today is Vera Moore. Hi, Vera. Hi, how are you? I am wonderful. How are you? Well, I'm terrific, and thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm ecstatic. Oh, yeah, I can tell. It's written all over your face. Let's jump right into it. I mentioned that you're from New York. Is that a true statement? Are you born and raised from New York City? Yes, I most certainly was. And I was born and raised in Corona, Queens. Wow, you're a Queens girl. Come on, girl. That's awesome. You still reside in New York, uh, Vera? Yes, I'm in, I'm in Long Island. It's still New York. You're still New York. Still New York. Yes. Tell, me, tell me, Vera, a little bit about your neighborhood growing up in Queens or just in New York in general. Tell me what was it like as a kid for you? Set the stage for us. Well, you know, I was born in a little town called Corona, Queens, and it was a poor neighborhood. My, my mother and father, uh, we were a poor family. Matter of fact, you would say we were a poor family, but I didn't know we were poor. Okay. No, I didn't know because my, we were, my mother always told us about, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You see, I didn't learn yes, you can in the last decade. Okay. We knew that. My mother was a domestic worker. Wow. She scrubbed floors. My father was a porter. Mm -hmm. He learned how to read from the Bible. But we were always taught we could do it no matter what. Mm. I had five brothers, right. one sister, so there was seven of us. Mm -hmm. I went to public school, 143, 127. Yeah. And uh, I remember, you know, I did, Michelle, I didn't know I was poor until I got older. Really? I'm serious. Yeah. Because I never was hungry, thank God. Thank yes. God for yes. that. I never was hungry. Well, yes. she was a domestic worker. We ate all the food that they brought home. I hear I'm you. very serious about that. Yeah, yeah. Really. And um, uh, we never, I never wanted for clothes because my aunt worked in a factory. Mm. Very, very expensive materials in the factory. She'd bring all the scraps home and she'd make clothes. They didn't even need a pattern. They'd say, turn around, girl, let me make you something. Mm. So I guess I was wearing couture and I didn't even know when I was a child. Wow. So I, always, I always had clothes. I always had food. Mm. But I remember going to school with a hole in my shoe. Really? Yeah, really. Mm. I remember going to school and my mother used to put cardboard in it. Wow, okay. And I would say, she would say to me, don't worry, you know, mommy's going to get you some shoes next week. And it, so it never really faced me. Mm -hmm. I, I never went, oh, I got a hole in my shoe. No, no, no. My mother was going to get it to me for me the following week, my mom and my dad. And I just went and it just, 
we were just raised that way. Right. We were always perceived. It's, it's about perception and the mindset. And right. I was taught from the beginning, I belong, and yes, you can. Wow, wow, wow. So you had it before Obama had it. Yes, you can. Oh, so Lord, have mercy. Yes, <laughs> I had, yes, I can with my grandmother. <laughs> that grandmother, girl, yeah, you can do it. Go ahead and do it. If so, you don't get it, you don't get it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Drop. Mm, mm. So, so Vera, help us to understand. Set, set us up some more. So, how did you get on this track? I want to at least start, start with the acting piece because I think that helps segue to what we see in you today. So, how how did you get the acting bug? How did that opportunity present itself? Well, you know, um, as I said, I never thought I was going to be an entrepreneur. But how did the acting start and the singing? You know, I grew up in the church. I grew yeah. up in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. and I sang in the choir. Yeah. And Sunday school, <laughs> church, go after, after, you know, after church, go in the back and eat the chicken, come back and do, you know, the whole thing. Right. And I always loved to sing. Mm. And anytime there was an opportunity to do anything, you know, at, at high school, at junior, I'll do it, I'll do it. I was never afraid. Thank God for that. I was, fear never paralyzed me. I guess I was so young, I didn't realize what fear was. It's like telling a baby jump and the baby jumps. Right. So I've always wanted to sing. So when I had the opportunity to audition, I did. Mm. And I'm going to tell you a little story real quick okay. about relationships. Now, that kind of goes with cosmetics and, and entrepreneurship, but it's really important. I knew I had to get a job. Mm. I didn't go to college. So right out of high school, I had to work. Mm -hmm. And there used to be people coming from the agencies like the city and the federal government to the high schools to see who wanted to take a test. Okay. You know, to, to work. Right. And I said, I said, Ma, you know, she says, take the test. Listen, if you don't, if you don't pass it, you don't pass it. And I was taking stenography. I took stenography on purpose because I knew I could get a job with shorthand and typing. Right. So I always had a strategy. Yeah. I always had a plan. Yeah. So I took the test, fast what I got it. Went worked for the federal government, and I was when I first got it, I was in a pool with a lot of people, like about 50, 60, up the whole floor. And I said, I don't want to be in this pool all these days. I want to be upstairs with Michelle on the third floor with the lawyer. And see, up on the third floor, you had the lawyer and the secretary. Yeah. I want, so my mother said, well, take the test. You don't get it, you don't get it. I took the test. Yeah, got it. But what's so nice about it, this is entrepreneurship, and this is all so personal. I made a relationship with the lawyer. And okay. I said, Mr. Greenberg, you know, I, I, I really want to be in the theater. He said, well, okay, I guess he didn't take me serious. Yeah. So do you mind if I go to auditions on my lunch hour? Now that's a, that's a good, I mean, that, that's a big deal. Yeah. We're down at Wall Street, Customs, I worked for Customs, yeah. and Uptown was where you went to audition. Yeah. So the relationship was key, my strategy was on point, I knew what I wanted to do. Wow. I knew I had to work to save my money because my mother couldn't help me so I could buy my music yeah. and I saved my money. So I would go to lunch, I would go to my auditions on my lunch hour. Yes. And I and I was I was late a lot. Because <laughs> going up from Wall Street to Midtown. Yeah. That, that's that's anybody that knows New York, that's yeah. more up an hour. Yeah. But the relationship was if he asked me to come in early, I would come in early. Mm -hmm. If I had to stay late. It was a win-win situation, and he didn't have to say yes. Right. He could have said no. Mm -hmm. But the relationship, being honest, having core values, and I used to eat on the train. Mm. And I take and I would take my clothes. This is for entrepreneurs that want to be serious about business. Right. I take my clothes in a bag. When I get up to Midtown to audition, I change because you had to look appropriate for that. Right. Go back, change my clothes to go back to the law division, and I did that for five years. So patience is key. Just auditioning, and you were getting auditioning, keeping my job. Yeah, yeah. So my, my whole goal was to stay there until I got a, until I got a, a gig. Wow. But it takes time, and I had to do that because you see, I wasn't in the union. My mm. goal was to be on Broadway and to be in the union. Okay. So you call, they, they call them cattle calls. Anybody that's in theater knows that you go to these big auditions because you're not in the union. So I did this, and my agent would say, "Can you can you get there at two thirty? I said, "Oh no, maybe I can come a little later." But it worked out. Mm. My point was, if I hadn't had the relationship. Yes. With my boss, yes. Mr. Greenberg, I got to give him all the credit. Yes. How would I have auditioned? Right, right. And I hooked my skills at night. Right. So that's how I eventually got, I eventually got, uh, I auditioned. My first job was Jones Beach Theater, South Pacific. And I was so grateful because I didn't have to go away. That was in Long Island. And then my next big job was Pearly Victorious on Broadway. Wow. So, and then, and then <laughs> when I first got my job, he said, I came back one, one day and he said, well, did you get it, Vera? I said, no, I didn't get it. That's okay. You know, that was my my mindset. You will get it. Mm -hmm. Tenacity. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If you don't get everything first time. Then one day I came back during the course of five years, and I was there for five years. Did you get it, Vera? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said to me, and I'm like, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to quit. Wow. 
he, he that's what he said in essence you're going to quit a federal government job for six weeks vacation because summer stock was only six weeks yes but i knew i could get my card my equity card okay because that was my passion that was my desire to do that and so once you quit it was no looking back never no matter the trials the tribulations the ups and downs no no there was never a yeah looking back. No. Yeah. And, you know, Vera, to your credit, the awesome part, yes, we thank your boss at the time because a lot, first of all, a lot of bosses are not that flexible, even till today. Oh, right? and federal government too? Right. You have to sign in and sign up. Right, you know. right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you were able to establish a relationship with him, I, I think it goes to your integrity, your responsibility, the probably how you performed in your job. He probably knew that you would get things done no matter what it would take, and he was willing to allow you to make those sacrifices, whether yes. you come in early or stay late. So for five years to move that way and not get a complaint speaks a lot to him and to you. So you well, guys have, have a relationship. Consistent. You have to be consistent. Yeah. It's easy. You know, first impression, yeah. I knew what I wanted to do when I got that job. Mm -hmm. I knew when I got that job out of high school, I was gonna take that job, save my money so I could quit the job and go into the theater. Wow. So yeah. I, already, I always had a plan, mm. but now the idea is you have to have your priorities intact. Right. I knew I went in the pool. I wanted to get out of the pool. I went upstairs with just working with the lawyer, and I said, this is a great opportunity for me. I had core values. I was had integrity. I was honest. If he asked me to do something, I did. I wasn't late. There was no bad, I, and I had the right attitude. Mm. Very important. Very you know, important. Oh, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so those are core values that, well, in anything you do, you've got to have those values. You do. But people, you know, not everybody wants to do that. Understood, understood. So now we're on Broadway. How yeah. long are we on Broadway before we start transitioning into the world of television? Well, I was on Broadway, let me see. I did, well, maybe mm, back and forth, back and forth, maybe 10 years. Well, I did Pearly Victorious from Belle Moore, the mm -hmm. two award winning wonderful and yes yes uh, I was that was about three years and then after that I auditioned for I went out to California and uh, was a background singer for Leslie Owens for a year then I came back to New York and did something with Kathleen Battle the opera singer the Metropolitan nice, Opera Singer nice. I did Tremonitia and we were at Kennedy Center in Washington DC nice and then came back to Broadway to do a comedy so maybe I don't know eight nine years okay ago. okay so how did you get the television bug how did that present itself to you that opportunity Okay, well, you know, um, you know, there always was a void in the market for quality product. Come on now. Now, mm. now when you're in a, when you're on Broadway, it's bigger than life. Right. So they pile that stuff on your face. It's thick. It's heavy. It's greasy. It's oily. It doesn't matter. I mean, it really doesn't matter. You're in the balcony. You're in this big state. They don't. They don't see. In essence, they really don't see. But when I got my major contract. On NBC, mm -hmm. Channel Four, we're the first Black family to go an hour on national television. Mm. Another role, I played Linda Metcalf. That yes. was the character. Back and forth, we had to audition, of course. Yes. You know, I'm fast forwarding. The agent called, "Can you make it?" I would do for the audition, I, and I finally got it. And that was a big deal. This was national television, Michelle. This, the, this wasn't a little little thing. This yeah. was big time. This is big time. Yeah, people came from all over the West Coast to audition, and they did the best. With what they had which was insufficient really because the makeup was heavy it was greasy it was oily and I'm not here to knock any other line but everybody was wearing that brand that rubbed all off on your clothes at the time right okay and I had I was Linda Metcalf another girl uh, a nurse Bay City General white uniform white hat mm. and I pick up the phone and I'd say good afternoon Dr. Matthews office may I help you <laughs> it was all over the phone Everybody, everybody knows about that makeup that rubbed all off all over the place. I, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, and then it'll be on your white, my white uniform. I said, no, this is not going to work. I am on national television. We got to do better. And it was very difficult because there was really wasn't anything out there. Maybe one or two lines. Mm-hmm. But you see, when you have a monopoly, the quality goes down because you have no competition. Uh, ooh, say that part again, Vera. Say that part you again. Monop when you have a monopoly, the line that was out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and there was no competition, so quality goes awry. Yes. When you have comp competition, you got to step up to the plate. Right, right. So the quality, the product that they had out there that most black women, I'm not telling everybody, because I don't want anybody calling me saying, 
Most black women were wearing it, and it was too heavy. Mm -hmm. It was too greasy. It was red. It was oily. It rubbed all off on your clothes. Now, here I am on national television under those hot lights in the studio, and this stuff is all over my clothes. And that was the genesis of Vera Moore Cosmetics. Okay. To tap into that untapped market, the void with a quality product. Mm. Mm. That's why I did it. Yeah. And how did you start that, Vera? How did you, you just started to make calls in the industry? How did you get that going? Well, First being okay. black and a female. I know those, there were challenges in that space. So how did you get it going? Well, you mean as far as getting the cosmetic company? Yes, going? yes. All right, well, you have to do your due diligence. You know, we did trade shows all over the United States. I mean, I did every show there was just to find out things. I know you've heard of the Bronner Brothers show. You've been Yes, everywhere. right. We did the Bronner Brothers shows for 15 years. Matter of fact, we did some of their things in their magazine, et cetera. So, and then we, we started interviewing chemists. Okay. And then we started going to manufacturers. You, I mean, it, it's not overnight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, there's no success overnight. I mean, you you know, success is failing up to success. You know, failing your way to success almost doing it. And then eventually, we tested it. You gotta you gotta test it. Right. And my husband had a hair salon. My husband's a licensed esthetician, cosmetologist. So I said, baby, you know, let me try this in the hair salon. I would try it on my friends, try it on people in the theater. They said, you know, dude, this is nice. I like this. It's not like the other stuff. It's not red. Everybody yeah. looks red. <laughs> it doesn't make me look. You know, we range from ivory to ebony, right? That is correct. I put that out there. We that. range from black to blue black, or white right. to blue black. Right. So my thing was. I didn't like for the woman up now, we know we're God's bouquet of flowers, so let me make it clear. But for the pitch black woman, the woman of a darker hue, they always look gray. Mm -hmm. They look gray because the, it wasn't made, well, they weren't even thinking about us at that particular right, time. Right. But there was such an issue about the woman of a darker hue looking gray. Mm -hmm. I said, it's ridiculous. Right. That was another reason. And the discoloration, that was another reason. People weren't taking care of their skin. They didn't know about regiments, cleaning, toning, mm. moisturizing. They had to break it down. It's like washing your hair. You rinse, you shampoo, rinse, and you condition, don't you? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to wear moisturizer? Why do you put moisturizer in your hair? Why do you do leave-in conditioner? Why do you go and eat that dryer for hot oil treatment? Same thing with your skin. Mm. Come on, Vera. Help yeah. us. <laughs> well, I had to the same thing with um, getting your nails done. Yeah. Okay, you get nails done. You gotta make it keep it simple, stupid, so people can understand. Not that they're stupid, that's just you know what I'm saying. Kiss. Right. You get a manicure, don't 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 you um get a base coat? Right. Okay, then after that, so that's your shampoo. Then after you get your base coat, she gives you she gives you the polish. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. she gives you a top coat. Coat, yes she does. That's your conditioner. Yeah. So why do I need it? Because that makes you have a regiment to for people to understand the importance of taking care of their skin. Mm. And that's why our mantra was skincare was the foundation. Yeah. Makeup is an accessory. When you say to somebody, oh, you know, about your foundation, they immediately think they immediately think of makeup. But your foundation is really your palate. Mm. How are you taking care of it? Mm. Do you know the difference? Mm. You know, are you dry all the combination this is why it's important for people to go to an esthetician or go to a skincare specialist or a dermatology or just listen we learned from when we were kids we didn't have no money to go to no esthetician right clean That's your the... face what <laughs> you do not go to bed with makeup on your skin at night right or anything on your skin <laughs> no well sorry. anything really you're supposed to just wash your face before wash you go to bed face. anyway and the most important thing is consistency yes and that deals for entrepreneurship or theater yeah everything you know those core values and those rules are prevalent mm-hmm 